Just getting ready to do a demo with our ag drone. It's wild, we got a big drone. We can spray tons of acres. We'll be doing lots of spraying this season, all autonomously. Got the stash still going right here. Oh yeah. I think it's going, <laughs> going strong. Right the power of the stash. <laughs> It'll spray all your fields. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's right on point. I was just making sure that it's gonna listen to the boundary. This is not the ideal direction to spray, but I was just wanting to make sure it's not gonna go down there and crash into the trees. That's the first time you've seen it, or no? Uh, no, I've seen it before, like at training. That's pretty good. Yeah. But you guys did not map this earlier, would you? Yeah. Did you? Mm -hmm. You gotta watch it when you get it up to speed on the sucker stand. It's not up to speed? No. This is slow. It'll go 30 mile an hour. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Do you hand control this thing all the time, or do you program the field? No, I program it. Yeah. I program it to do what I want it to do, and then sometimes it likes to do its own thing. <laughs> so then I tell it it can't do that thing. <laughs> Uh -huh. Ooh, that tree looked closer than that. <laughs> oh, it's, it's close. <laughs> it definitely makes you a little nervous, that is for sure. Oh, my stomach was doing a flip. Like yes, now look how it's cooking. You see how much it tilted? Yeah. So it was getting to speed, and then once it's to speed, it'll level out, and this thing almost becomes like a wing. So it'll lean hard. And then once it gets there, it'll like almost like level out because it's more efficient that way. I've actually had a spray drone for just about a year now. And a lot of what I see happening in the industry around specifically drones is just fungicide and plant health applications, I think is the big ticket right now. I think we're gonna see that advancement grow as technology grows. So we're gonna send this little Mavic 3 out to do an updated map. Basically, there's a field down here that we gotta know exactly where the boundaries are. So we're gonna send this thing out, get a brand new map made, then we'll, uh, we'll throw that into our software that the big drone flies on, and then it knows exactly where to go. We just saw an updated map. The boundary around this field, if you look at the aerial from Google Maps, there's still a big tree line down there, a bunch of trees hanging into the field, but they actually recently cut down all the trees. There's one tree there. They cut all these down, right? There's the yeah. aftermath. Isn't that nuts? That's cool. So with our updated map, now we can fly super close to the field edge without hitting trees. Way more precise. Way more. Coming out tonight, good looking crowd. Didn't know how many people would show up. This is the first time we've ever tried something like this, but I wanted to explain what the purpose is of the whole evening and a little bit about how you and I were flying. So the Maysville elevator owner was kind of given a rundown of what the night looks like. The night is a drone spraying demonstration for crop fields, doing fungicides, doing some nitrogen. I'm getting a little bit of an education myself. <laughs> so he was letting the people know what to expect. We got three drone operators. Nick Rory's Denny's Mike. I've been flying drones for many years, just little drones to look for people's deer they can't find. And I've always been interested in the ag side of drones. It looks like we're in for some <laughs> interesting demonstration. <laughs> so you may be wondering who this guy is, which is probably what a lot of people are wondering. So, so this guy is the newest addition to our team. That's right. Is Gary. So I'm helping kind of with some financial stuff, uh, basically whatever plot needs filled at the point, but trying to organize a lot of financial parts and uh, stuff like that. So maybe I'll get behind the camera, do some, yeah. some of that stuff, who knows. So kind of a controller <laughs> CFO, basically with ag getting ready to explode here in Northeast Ohio, there's mm -hmm. gonna be like, there's three companies of yeah. which we're one. Yeah. And there's so many more acres than the three of us can cover combined. Oh yeah. So it's gonna be, you know, building a team, purchasing more equipment. Yeah. And then Gary's gonna help us run the whole main office. And uh, so that I can <laughs> run around and like shoot videos. <laughs> be and creative. And Gary will <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, help out with uh, the controller side. So we're super pumped about it. We start next week. 
uh, start the following week. You're gonna see more of this guy in upcoming videos. <laughs> you know, people ask how, how many acres can you do? You don't go based on what the sales guy tells you because that's not true at all. They'll tell you his drone will do 52 acres an hour, probably not true. Realistic acres, what we've been doing just lately, it depends on how many total solution gallons you're spraying. Uh, but if you're spraying about two gallons an acre, you should get about 25 um, acres an hour is what we've been averaging. But yeah, so we'll be flying a XAG P100. It has like a red hood on the top of it. I've been flying a drone for just under a year now. Uh, bought mine back in July of last year basically and flew corn fungicide. And then this spring I've done some burn down applications. I'll be flying a DJI uh, T30. The control area that he's not going to hit is over there where the flags are. Upward obstacle avoided. Oh. Look at us just sitting here with our arms crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Drooling. What are you spraying per acre? Four gallons. Four gallons an acre. At max speed? Like whatever it allows you to do at four gallons an acre? I'm gonna test it. The T30, what it does is that it doesn't turn at the end, it just slides over and then goes backwards because it's got front and rear nozzles, so it'll just fly in reverse the other way. You know, from standing here, it looks like it hits that house. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Death perception, you gotta learn it for sure. For sure. Mike was flying his earlier just in front of these trees, and I'm like, oh, he seems awful close to them trees, but you know, yeah. it, it is, it's a, it's a depth perception thing. It has applied 14.88 uh, liters. It's gonna take 40 liters to do that field. We're using uh, a lot battery because we were heavy. Pretty wild, we, uh, we have sprayed 3.26 acres. We applied 18.28 liters on this field out there going about 30 mile an hour. That's in about 10 minutes, barely. Yep, 10 minutes. Because we're traveling this far from right there to where we're going, it uses a lot of energy to carry the weight with it. So if we set up right next to the field, we can usually go on a, on a tank. 10, 10, 15 percent. Yep, well, I think booking it. Mike, it seems like everybody who's flying a drone here, three different people at this event, everybody started a year or less. Yeah, yeah. So, and we have farmers here. It's like the first time that they're seeing it. First time they've ever seen it. And of course they're impressed with our operation because we're more professional. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I just had to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cool to see how like the whole industry is like we're at the very beginning. Oh, this is where it's going. Like there's people that are yeah. professional helicopter applicators. That's what they yeah. do. And they're going to drones. Well, and I just spoke to a gentleman who Planted his first field of corn in '58, 1958. Oh, wow. And he's like, I mean, he's like, well, this is actually happening. He's like, yes, it is. That is wild. Welcome to 2023. That is wild. Yeah. Drone can pick up about 200 pounds. Yeah. And with our drone, um, you can do both seating and spraying. Yeah. Just switch out the undercarriage. But really, the breakthrough, I think, that more and more people are going to start doing is doing a, a high fidelity map first, flying a mapping mission, getting an accurate map. You know, every year fields change yeah. on what they're putting in. Trees so, change, you know, telephone poles change. You, know, you can fly a lot more accurate routes and stuff. Yeah, way more flying. precise than like yeah. an airplane. Or so part of our workflow for every field we do is gonna be first mapping it you know, before you ever get the big ag drone out. We uh, recently started doing drone applications. Our goal is to help organic farmers with spraying, fertilizing. When Amazon started delivering with drones, it just looked like crap. They landing in people's yard with a huge drone and just Bit of a safety hazard. risk. <laughs> so you have a vision for delivering seed and other kind of agricultural light products via drone in Amish country, Ohio? <laughs> Long term, yes. I don't know how close we are to that, but it is an interest that... that Dude, yeah. if Amish country figured out how to pull that off, that would be... Amazing. That, yeah. 
Best of luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So this is kind of wrapping up field days here. What's been a really uh, fun evening, flying drones. Farmers, community, getting to know about what drones can do and the benefits and all the different applications from everything from small farmers to larger farmers. So the community seems like they're excited about it. I think after seeing the drones in action for the first time, there's a different level of understanding about how drones could serve how they could spray their field. So it's been fun. I think the drone industry is set to explode or has been exploding over the past couple of years. And uh, excited about our team here at Drone Deer Recovery. We're gearing up to, to also grow like crazy. Already have a bunch of operators with us on the thermal drone side. And as we develop the systems, we'll also be bringing some of them on to fly ag drones. So pretty excited about that. Future looks bright. And uh, thanks for joining us. I'll steal Mike's line and say, we'll see you on the next one.